Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. My name is Clayton Chastain, your host for today's episode. Today we have with us Christian Ramirez, a PhD student at South Dakota State University. So Christian, would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself? Hello, Clayton. Thanks for the invitation. Well, my name is Christian Ramirez, as you mentioned. I'm from Ecuador, and I'm currently a PhD student in, in animal science at South Dakota State University. I also did a PhD in data science during my, my, my PhD studies on the top of that. Yes. All right. And you said you're, you said you're about done. You're about graduated. Do you have any uh, plans after this of where you're going to go or if you're going to continue anywhere else? Well, I defended my, my PhD just a couple of weeks ago and my graduation is in August and I'm currently looking for opportunities for a postdoc. All right. I hope to find something soon. Yeah. Good luck with that. Thank so you. speaking of your studies, um, recently I saw a study that you presented on the amino acid requirements in gestating sows. Can you share a little bit about that with us? Yep, yep. So that's part of my PhD. And I can say that my PhD is a combination between data science and animal science. And as, as an introduction, I'll say that a principle in data science is that the quality of your conclusions depends on the quality of your data. But I think most importantly, it depends on the quality of your assumptions. And some assumptions that we use in animal nutrition have not been reviewed in the last 80 years. So the first part of my PhD was to review those assumptions using data science tools such as data visualization and data mining, for example, using data published in the last 50 years related to uh, sow nutrition, but also nutrition in different uh, species. And I also use data collected during my master's in animal nutrition that, that I did here in South Dakota State as well. And what my research shows is that animals can downregulate functions. So if the animal intake is not optimal, these functions are downregulated. And the first ones are the ones related to long-term survival, such as, for example, gut health, immune system, and also reproduction, uh, which is, includes lactation. So the functions that are upregulated at low amino acid intakes are the ones related to short-term survival, which includes lean tissue deposition. Right? So in order to understand why this might happen, I perform different agent-based model simulations, which basically are mathematical simulations where you simulate an animal in their environment. And, and the animal designed, let's call design that prioritized lean tissue over health was more efficient because from an ecological point of view, animals are more likely to be killed by a predator rather than a disease, at least during evolution. So uh, to support this a little bit more, I, I can mention that research in humans and pigs shows that, for example, if methionine intake is low, the production of intestinal epithelial tissue is reduced without redu reductions in the rate of protein synthesis, for example. Or if the leucine intake is, is low, protein turnover rates are decreased without reducing their protein synthesis rates. So this means that a low amino acid intake, lean tissue deposition is prioritized over gut health, protein turnover, or, or health in general. Um, in order to explain a little bit further, I'm going to use an example done in wild boar. So wild boar in poor nutritional environment increased their home ranges. So animals had to move more looking for food. But it, this also increases the risk of predation, for which running is the main strategy for escaping predation. So it makes sense that animals have low amino acid intake prioritize lean tissue. And this is a different view of what we consider in, in nutrition. We, we consider that when the animal meets the requirements for growth, already met all their functions. So it's like a change in the in paradigm, paradigm. So another way of seeing this is that it's an important strategy of wild boar for escaping predation is also hiding. So prioritizing lean tissue or body appearance reduces the probability of being targeted by a predator. So that means when the animal compromised their, their, their physical appearance, they already compromised uh, gut health, the immune system, or reproduction if the amino acid is low. So that, that's more or less the principle behind it or changing the assumptions of the models. And based on this principle, I developed a dose response curve that tells you exactly at what intakes the, 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 the animal will maximize in tissue and at the levels that will maximize uh, health or reproduction. And this is around 40% above the requirement for maximizing lean tissue in cells, right? 
So then using this concept, this, 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 those response curves developed, I estimated a requirement for SAUs. And using those the requirements I proposed, uh, what I concluded for, from, from this modeling approach is that at the point where uh, the requirement proposed depicts our bone heavier, but not only heavier, but more physiological developed. So their immune system is more developed and they, they're, they're in, uh, the survivability rates increase. And also the cells produce better milk and colostrum without mobilizing a lot of tissue in, in lactation, which uh, mobilizing tissue is associated with decreases in long-term performance. That's more or less a short summary of my findings. And then this, this, uh, those response curves that I developed can be used in different species. I've seen the same pattern in, in, in a lot of different species, even in humans. So there's a potential for this method I developed for estimated requirements that maximize health in general in different species, including humans. So that increase you said of 40% above the NRC um, requirements, was that just for lysine in particular, or was that for um, a lot of other amino acids as well? So I did it in lysine because what's the data available, but I think it's the lysine came with the other amino acids. So it's increasing actually in all, in, in all protein, which is basically uh, I'm using lysine as a, me a measure of all protein. Okay. So I, it, yeah, it should be in all amino acids. Yeah, so that actually reminds me of a recent uh, episode that we had with Dr. Chantal Farmer at Sugar Research and Development Center. And she ran a study that had very similar results to your analysis. She increased lysine with additional soybean meal from day 90 to 110 of gestation, um, again, by 40% of the NRC minimum. And what she, another thing she saw was she saw, and this is for gilts in particular, and she saw a roughly 40% increase in parenchymal mass of the gilts, which translates to increased milk and colostrum yield. And you said it had, when you fed that 40% or you modeled when it was 40%, it was going to result in better milk yield and better colostrum quality. Yes, yes. So I think you're both kind of onto the similar track there to potentially change or suggest a change in the NRC recommended minimum lysine percentage. Because if you've said, or as you've said, we are seeing several benefits come from that increased protein. The only problem is the sow eats so much that increased protein is going to cost money. It's going to cost a good amount of money. So where do you think, or where, yeah, where do you think the most economical level of that could fall? Do you think some of the ben all the benefits that we see are going to be significant enough to justify increasing lysine, even with the increased cost of feed during gestation. So, according to my predictions, based on the, the modeling approach I did, uh, using the requirements I'm proposing, I'm predicting that the sow will have a full extra value pick and one extra parity in, in, in per, per sow that that will be an average, and I think that should be enough for paying the extra cost of increase. Feet, especially during late, late gestation and lactation. And, and also the physiological stress is reduced of the sow. There might be other benefits in health. Gotcha. So I know you said you're leaving soon, but do you know if your team plans to do any more research on this topic or maybe do, do a um, study of their own on this? Well, there are plans for, for keep going into this direction. Uh, not right now, we have other, other commitments, or my advisor have other commitments with other research, but certainly she, the main focus of her is amino acid requirements, so I'm sure she will work on, on this in the future. Gotcha. Well, um, I think I'll all be looking forward to that, because we've seen, again, we've seen a couple interesting studies that have suggested different levels, but I think that's all we have time for, so I want to thank you for coming on the show, and to everyone else listening, thank you for listening to Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com, and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey everyone, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show to talk about it and share with us, feel free to send an email to nutritionblackbelt at swineit.com and we would love to take a look at your research. Oh.